changes over my career. Well, of course, it now spans 60 years, almost, um, that'll be next year, since I first came into contact with muscular dystrophy, of course, which changed my whole career, changed my whole direction, changed uh, practically everything. Uh, and I think the main change, just looking overall, when I came into the area, I knew nothing about the disease. I'd never seen it before, and that would stimulate the need to go and look around the wards the following day at Queen Mary's Hospital for Children, where there were two wards with these boys with muscular dystrophy on long stay, because they had their schooling there as well. And so I was absolutely fascinated. And then I also noted that they had the most tremendous deformities, and many of them had a sort of S-shaped scoliosis of the spine. And it soon transpired that they'd only seen the doctor at one clinic, usually a neurologist, who told the parents, I'm sorry, he's got muscular dystrophy, there's absolutely nothing we can do, just make him comfortable. So these children were just left sitting in the corner, and they got total twisting of their feet and ankles, so that they couldn't even get into shoes, and they had muffs to put over in the winter to prevent the cold sores and then they got the most terrible curvature of the spine and so I felt sure there was something one could do and it was fortunate that Queen Mary's actually that there had been an epidemic of polio in 1956 uh, fortunate in, not for the patients but fortunate for support of treatment because they had a number of children on ventilators and they also had a very active rehabilitation department and they also had a very active program of preventing deformities. And one of the nursing staff actually was in charge of running a unit for making jackets for these children to prevent their curvature of the spine. And she had a brilliant uh, idea of getting celluloid from a factory nearby Queen Mary's that um, had a lot of offcuts of celluloid they were using for other purposes. And this was then dissolved in acetone, uh, painted onto muslin bandages, which were wrapped about the child's chest, for example. And then it dried very hard and formed a nice lightweight jacket with very little cost. And in fact, it proved very effective that when these children stopped walking and the back was still straight, you could then put them into this and prevent it. And so the prevention of deformities, I think, was something very therapeutic for the children. And uh, although it might have not been curative in the sense of disease, it made a big difference to their well-being. And I think the sort of attitude that there's no disease that's so bad you can't do something for the child or for the family is a very important pediatric principle, which I think the neurologists after about 50 years are now gradually starting to accept as well uh, and um, it's a big contrast now how much more positive people are and particularly now that we're on the cusp possibly of therapeutic breakthrough in the muscle field.